Good morning. Welcome home, everybody. Great to see all the faces. Oh, it is definitely different. I am not used to walking that way to this way. It's only my second time up here giving the sermon for you, um, sharing the message. As we uh, have been doing, as you can tell, some changes, sorry for any inconvenience or any we did as best as we could. There is some still touch-up stuff. We ask that you bear with us. And there will be more changes to come later on. We'd just like to ask for your uh, forgiveness for the renovation. Let's go to our Father this morning. Heavenly Father, I thank you for all the smiling faces. Thank you for the warm hearts that you give us, Lord, and the guidance you give us every day. God, I pray that you will be with me as I as I share your message this morning in pastor's place, that you will be the one that leads me and guides me and that it is your word that comes out of my mouth and not mine. God, I pray that you will help us to all take that out into the world when we are done today and share it with others. And I think it is a powerful message and it's one that is built, that builds who we are as Christians, Lord. God, we thank you for that. In your son, Jesus' name, amen. So this morning, it's uh, going to be the last part of our Faith of Our Fathers series that we were doing. Um, we're wrapping up. and It's been inspiring to us to become closer to Jesus, I hope, for everybody, that it has made a difference to us all on how we see things especially in how we live our days out. Our forefathers fought so that we could enjoy freedom and life to the fullest. I got to be honest, we can't experience life to the fullest without integrity. That is the basis of what we should build ourselves on. Um, so I ask, what is integrity? Integrity is being honest. It's being upright, having good morals, being faithful, and being righteous. The best way that we get these values as Christians is by spending time in the Bible and learning from others with integrity. You can't fill the pot with good things if you don't hang around good things. Um, sorry, I lost my spot. Because the opposite of integrity is shame, and I believe that a vast majority of people today operate under the umbrella and guilt of shame. They don't get to actually experience life and the opportunities that there are. So let's change that. Remember, change doesn't begin in the White House. It begins where? Thank you. Amen. Ephesians 4.25 says, So stop telling lies. Let us tell our neighbors the truth, for we are all parts of the same body. Amen? Just as we are all parts here as a family. If you've been watching the news lately, there are a number of businesses that are compromising and consolidating in order to continue to grow. For instance, Hale Business Systems, Mary Kay Cosmetics, Fuller Brush, and WR Grace Company are now merging to become Hale, Mary, Fuller, Grace. <laughs> FedEx is expected to join with its major competitor, UPS, and become fed up. Now, this one is a little bit different for you. Grey Poupon, you know, the mustard company, and Docker, the jeans company, are merging to become Poupon Pants. <laughs> See, that's funny. <laughs> that's funny. But in reality, it's not funny at all when we begin to compromise and consolidate things that really matter, specifically our integrity. I contend that it is a merger that should never happen to us. If it does, it means we're not living the right way. Here's a fact. God places a high priority as well as a high payoff on integrity. So how do we become a person of integrity? We've talked about the why and the what, and today we wrap up the series, we're going to talk about the how. 
Step one, examine your heart. If we're going to be totally honest with others, we have to be totally honest with ourselves. This isn't going to be easy because it requires honesty, but it's really the key. Socrates wrote, the unexamined life is not worth living for a human being. So let's put our life under the x-ray. Remember the book we quoted a couple of weeks ago. That was when I wasn't here, unfortunately. The Day America Told the Truth. In this book, a good question was posed. What are you willing to do for $10 million? Now, as I read these, they might be a shocker to you, or at least I hope they're a shocker to everybody. 25% would abandon their own families. 3% say they would go as far as putting their children up for adoption. 25% would abandon their church. 23% would become prostitutes for a week or more. 16% would give up their American citizenship. 16% would leave their spouse. 10% would withhold testimony and let a murderer go free. 7% would kill a stranger. My response to that is, are you serious? Where were these questions asked? New York City? Because I know that these ain't the questions, these ain't the answers we would get from the family and friends that I know. Or at least I pray in my heart they're not. Jeremiah 17, 9 says, The heart is more deceitful than all else and is desperately sick. Who can understand it? Let's get personal. You ever been out for dinner? Or doing something and someone walks up to you and says, Hi, you probably don't remember me? Instant response. Oh, yeah, I remember you. But you really don't. You have no clue who they are. Has something like that ever happened to you? I know it's happened to me. You know, walking down the street. Hey, do you remember me? Yeah, it's pretty common, right? Have you ever heard the question, do you know why I pulled you over? If you're going to be people of integrity, the first step is going to be honesty. Examine our hearts and take a genuine inventory of who we are. Picture a 50-gallon barrel sitting here, if you will, a, a rain barrel. There you go. And it represents your life. We fill it up to the top with water, and the water is your integrity. Everyone with me so far, do you understand where I'm going? Okay? Now, let's say we develop a hole, if you will, a hole of compromise. We're dishonest at work, or we didn't keep our word at home, or we skewed our numbers on our tax return. So they benefited us. Here's my question. How much integrity do you have left in that barrel? Allow me to give you the answer in two parts. Your level of compromise is equal to the level of your integrity. Any, the second part, any level of compromise removes any and all level of integrity. It drains it, doesn't it? So examine your heart. Evaluate the cost and benefit. When we're in a moment of decision, we need to look down the road and ask ourselves, when I get there, will I like the results? I personally have had to face that one in the years, last few years. It's been eye-opening. I contend that our great problems with understanding integrity is that we never look far enough down the road. In 1971, which is a great year, by the way, <laughs> Fram Oil Filter ran a campaign with the statement, pay me now or pay me later. Makes sense. The idea, of course, is spend a little bit of money now, maintain your vehicle, or wreck the engine and you pay for an engine later. Maintenance. The credit card industry, they're a great 
thing. Um, built themselves around the mantra, buy it now, pay it later. We know how well that all works out. And they were right. Pay for it later. Buy it now. This is where the enemy comes in to be, because he knows that, for the most part, things always look good up front, but of course, he never tells us about the interest that piles up to kill us later. I have to say that we as humans generally look to what's pleasing to us now and not what's down the road. Ben Johnson, who was a Canadian sprinter, anybody remember him? I do, I'm old enough. Who broke the world record in the 100 meter dash in 1988 Olympics? He ran 9.79 seconds, beating our very own Carl Lewis. The Toronto Star entitled him Ben Fastic. But the story has it he cheated. While he was in the Caribbean, being treated for an aggravated hamstring, he was injected with all kinds of drugs to treat the injury. One of those drugs was steroids. Supposedly, he was overheard by a writer, him and his coach, talking about how they could beat the system by injecting him with enough different kinds of drugs they would never figure it out. However, despite their public denial of any use, it was discovered that Ben had drugs, steroids, in his body, and his costs were high. It cost him his world record, and it cost him his gold medal. The National Canadian Track Association banned him for life. He was suspended by the International Track and Field Association for two years and had five to six million dollars in advertisement profits pulled from him. High cost, right? For trying to cheat the system. Imagine taking integrity out of your life as a Christian, as a person, period. Galatians 6, 7 says, Don't be misled. You cannot, cannot mock the justice of God. You will always harvest what you plant. We've all heard that before. You reap what you sow, you harvest what you plant. Very true. I've heard it said the measure of a man's real character is what would he do if he knew he would never be found out. Any of us ever had that thought in our head? Nobody will ever know. Nobody saw me do it. I can get away with it. Mark 4, 22. I love the red lettering. <laughs> For everything that is hidden will eventually be brought into the open and every secret be brought to light. No matter what you think or how you think you can hide it, if nothing else, the man upstairs knows what you did. Experience God. Ephesians 3, 19. May you experience the love of Christ, though it is too great to understand fully. Then you will be made complete with all the fullness of life and power that comes from God. I say again. May you experience the love of Christ, though it is too great to understand fully, then you will be made complete with all the fullness of life and the power that comes from God. Very powerful and true. Here's the deal, people. Family. The more intimate that we are with God, the more, more committed we'll be to living a life of integrity. Think about it. If we imitate, if we intim if, sorry, if we're intimate with God, we will imitate God. There's no good, there's no need for you and I to profess something that we're not pursuing. In other words, there's no need for us to keep calling ourselves Christians if we're going to hold on to un hold on to unforgiveness and bitterness. There's no need for us to keep calling ourselves Christians if we're going to make a covenant and not keep it. There's no need for us to keep calling ourselves Christians if his ways 
are not going to be our ways. Amen? So allow me to ask you this. What are you chasing, really? Because the Bible says in Psalm 119, 1, 2, Happy are those who live pure lives, who follow the Lord's teachings. Happy are those who keep his rules, who try to obey him with their whole heart. Let me add that in order to be fulfilled, as Pastor has said before and I've said, we encourage people all the time. Spend time in the Bible. Spend time with the Word every day, 10 minutes minimum. And it will fulfill you with what you need to how to live your life and to be a good Christian. If I may, my dad said to me one time, and he kept it in our family, if you lie to me once, I don't care how small it is, I will never trust you again in life. And I can tell you to this day, he is 75 years old. And there's people that have lied to him 50 years ago. He don't know whether to trust them today or not. And they were children when they lied to him. That's integrity. And let me close with this thought. Exercise integrity. A famous man we might have heard of, Abraham Lincoln, was president under fire, especially during the years of the Civil War. And though he knew that he would make mistakes while in office, he resolved to never compromise his integrity. So strong was his resolve that he once said, now get this and let's think about this one. I desire so to conduct the affairs of this administration that if at the end, when I come to lay down the reins of power, I have lost every other friend on earth. I shall have one friend left, and that friend shall be down inside of me. Here's a fact. You only become better when you implement the ingredients to get better. Like I said, you have to put it in. You have to fill yourself with it. Fill yourself with the good. And I can contend that I would have to say if I go ask Abraham Lincoln that I think he was pleased with what he did and that he stood up for himself. And he stood up for all those he did. Proverbs 11.3 Good people will be guided by honesty. It's been said... All of life is lived from inside out. When the great Michelangelo painted the magnificent frescoes on the ceiling of the Sistine Chapel, I've never been there, but I can tell you I probably, if I ever get to visit, I'd never be able to pick all the little things out in the pictures or his paintings. A friend asked him why he was taking such pains with the figures that would be viewed from considerable distance. His friend says, after all, who would ever notice whether it was perfect or not? Michelangelo responded, I will. Integrity, folks, it comes from deep inside. And it leads us in life as to how we should be. So when you get that little struggle inside you that says, hey, you shouldn't be doing it this way, that's integrity kicking in and saying, huh, maybe I should rethink my process. Integrity means honesty, like I said, honesty, uprightness, righteousness. And it is a mainstay to being a good Christian and a good person. As we close out our day, I pray that we, uh, I shouldn't say close out our day, we're starting our day. Let's take that out into the world and share that with others. And let them know what integrity is. Integrity as Christians and as people. That we share with them, we're honest with them, we love them, and we're compassionate. Jesus, he, he guided us to do the same. He's the best author I know of. Was God and his son Jesus. Like I say, I, I contend that if you follow what they say, it will make you better inside. Bow our heads.
Heavenly Father, as I close today, I thank you for the time that I've had here to share with this with the congregation, Lord. I pray that they take your words that I shared with them and they share them with others. And that they go out and they live a happy, content life with integrity, Lord. God, I pray this in your son, Jesus' name. Amen.